I have to say, this is kind of a messy cocktail, which is fairly shitty if you think about it. Oh, looks kind of weird. Oh my God, I'm covered in the stuff. It looks adorable. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Kira. My name is Kira, and I'm a whiskey loving Irish gal who's on a cocktail voyage of discovery. If you are new here, I have zero professional bar experience other than a passion for making mixed drinks at home and showing you how I do it. So hit that subscribe button, stick around, and we both just might learn something because if I can do it, you can do it. So in today's video, I'm going to be making a cocktail that I am so excited to not only make, but also try for the first time. It is summery, it's beautiful. I've heard it's delicious. I'm going to be making a painkiller. So not only is the painkiller supposed to be absolutely delicious, but it has a very interesting backstory. And if you've watched this channel before, you will know that I absolutely love learning a little bit of history about the cocktails that I am making. And this one in particular is very good. So before we get into the history of a painkiller cocktail and I show you how I make it at home for the first time, I would like to take a second to tell you about my Patreon. Not only is it a great way of supporting my channel, but you can also have access to exclusive content. You can join in on my monthly live stream with my Patreon community, and you can see the footage that is just too tipsy for YouTube. So without rambling on too much, let's get into the history of a painkiller. So as I mentioned, the painkiller cocktail has a very interesting history. It was first created in the 1970s in the Soggy Dollar Bar, which is based on the British Virgin Islands. Hilariously, it is called the Soggy Dollar Bar because there is actually no dock between the water and the bar itself. So guests who are visiting are forced to disembark into the water and wade through the shallows to get to the bar itself, leaving them with, you know, wet trousers and they would no doubt have soggy dollars that they would have to pay for their drinks with. So that is why it's called the Soggy Dollar Bar. So it was actually a woman named Daphne Henderson who created the first painkiller and that was sold at the Soggy Dollar Bar. However, the founder the founder of Pusser's Rum, his name was Charles Tobias, was constantly trying to get the recipe from her and she never gave it to him after years of trying to extract it until he started to take the drink that she would make for him home and then he would do various tests and experiments on it to extract the exact recipe and he eventually succeeded in this and then he went on to copyright the painkiller as his own despite not inventing it. And he even went on to sue other bars who were making a painkiller because it was trademarked as his cocktail, which is fairly shitty if you think about it. I understand that cocktails have certain origins and certain people are credited with making them, but it is very, very rare that you see someone actually copywriting a cocktail. We have seen it done with the Dark and Stormy, which I've looked at on this channel before. I will leave the link to that video below, but it is very, very rare that people copyright cocktails because it's just not really something that you're supposed to do. So even though the painkiller has remained an extremely popular cocktail, it's kind of a well-known thing that Pusser's Rum stole the recipe and copyrighted it. And even though you were technically supposed to use Pusser's Rum in this cocktail in order to call it a painkiller, we are going to be making not a painkiller today and we're going to be using a different rum instead. So now that I've given you a little bit of history on the painkiller cocktail, let's get into its ingredients. So as you can imagine, the painkiller is a rum-based cocktail. And if you want to call it a painkiller and serve it in your bar or restaurant, then technically speaking, you have to use Pusser's rum. But today we're going to be making not a painkiller and I'm going to be using a different type of rum on principle alone. And it's not only just because I have a rum that I really, really like. So I'm going to be using the Gosling's Bermuda rum, which I find incredible for summery, tiki rum-based drinks. It works so, so well. It's a Bermuda black rum 80 proof and it's got a gorgeous gorgeous kick of flavor to it so whether or not you want to use pusser's rum or maybe gosling's any other aged dark rum will work really really well so for the painkiller cocktail we are also going to be using some pineapple juice i have some tropicana pineapple juice here although i would love to freshly juice some pineapples i think it will be quite complicated so i'm just going to use this instead the painkiller cocktail also uses orange juice and this is something that i can easily juice fresh here so i have a fresh 
orange that I can use for this. So we're also going to be using an ingredient that I'm so excited to use for the first time because I finally have my hands on it and it is the Coco Lopez cream of coconut. If you watched my pina colada cocktail video from probably a year ago at this stage, I used the closest thing to cream of coconut that I could find, which was coconut cream. But this is what you want to use for those kinds of cocktails. So apparently this is going to work really, really well and give it that gorgeous creamy consistency. So I'm very excited to use it. And then the garnish for this drink is very simple. It is just a sprinkle of grated nutmeg, which I'm really curious to see how that will work in this drink because it's not a typical garnish at all, especially for a summery drink like this. Okay, so now that we have all of our ingredients ready, let's get into actually making a painkiller. <laughs> So despite this cocktail being very similar to the pina colada that I mentioned before, the method for this one is actually a lot more simple. There's no blending involved. You're basically just shaking everything up together. So it should be pretty straightforward. In you go. This Gosling's aged rum is, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> it just smells like summer. So we're gonna be doing 60 mils of this, so pretty generous. Uh, when I was looking up the painkiller, apparently there are three different versions depending on how much pain relief you need. And it comes as no surprise that the painkiller actually started as a hangover cure. So we're gonna do 60 mils of rum into our shaker. Okay, so 45 mils of pineapple juice in on top. 15 mils of orange juice, and this I'm gonna squeeze fresh. Oh, beautiful, that is a very juicy orange. Okay, so 15 mils of fresh orange juice. All right, so now we've got our rum, our pineapple juice, and our orange juice in our shaker. So let's go ahead and open the cream of coconut. I'm actually so buzzed about using this. Ooh, looks kind of weird. Smells like coconut. Okay, so 22 mils of our cream of coconut. Did I stir that enough? I'm gonna have to give this a really, really good shake. Oh my God, I'm covered in the stuff. I have to say, this is kind of a messy cocktail, which isn't a bad thing necessarily but I hope it's worth it. Do you know what I mean? So we've got everything in the shaker. Not gonna lie, the cream of coconut is kind of coagulating on the top. Doesn't look very pretty, but we're gonna give it a good shake and see if we can mix it up nicely and see how we get on. Okay, so now that that is looking good, we're going to decant it into our glass. I have another gorgeous little tiki mug that I'm very excited about using. I picked this up recently, um, but you would be using a tumbler glass for this. So anything that's a bit wider and a bit flatter will work really, really well for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up with ice. All right, so we've got our glass filled with ice. So let's go ahead and strain it on in and see how it's looking. Ooh. Okay, so because this is such a wide, girthy glass, I have filled it up with ice, uh, which you're meant to do anyway, just to get that level up at the height that I want it. And then we are just gonna finish with our garnish, which is some grated nutmeg, which seems like, again, a strange garnish. I kind of want to go in with maybe a slice of orange or something as well, because there's orange juice in it. So I might go ahead and do that just for the absolute crack. Doing it on a tiki drink seems very, very strange but how and ever, is that too much? Who knows? And then let's just do a little, maybe even like a wedge of orange as a bit of a garnish. Is that gonna sit on the way that I want it? Is that cute? Are you gonna fall in? So our painkiller is officially done. I have to say it looks pretty nifty. I'm very, very excited to try it. It's lovely and cold. It's full of ice. We've got a nice little cheeky garnish on the side as well as our nutmeg. But if you will join me over on my cocktail drinking chair, I'm gonna be trying this for the first time. Have never had a painkiller before and I will let you know how she tastes. Okay, so I am back in the cocktail drinking chair. I am very excited to try a painkiller for the first time. It looks adorable, I love it. So I don't really know what to expect. Like I said, I've never had it. It smells beautiful. All the ingredients are stunning, so I don't really see how this can go wrong. So, cheers. Oh, that is absolutely magnificent. You would literally drink that in one go. It is gorgeous. The pineapple juice is absolutely divine. It's like the kind of primary thing that hits your mouth. It's gorgeous. The orange juice is there, it's nice, but it's very subtle. And the rum is just gorgeous. I mean, that Gosling's rum, 
It's absolutely beautiful. It's gonna go with so many different rum-based cocktails, but it plays really, really nicely with the pineapple juice. It's so, so good. So overall thoughts on the painkiller, it is an absolute win for me. I can't believe I have not tried this sooner. What a gorgeous, stunning summer drink. I can envision myself lounging on some beach in a snazzy bikini, drinking several of these, having a great time. But yes, it is so good. So it is at this stage in the video that I get to sit back, enjoy my cocktail and answer some questions from my Patreon community. So I have a question here from the lovely Eric Monger, Mongu, I'm not sure. Um, and Eric asks, have have you ever kissed the Blarney Stone or is it just a thing for tourists? Eric, I have never kissed the Blarney Stone, Eric. And to be honest with you, I don't know many people that actually have. Um, I think it is kind of just a tourist thing. I know the Blarney Stone is supposed to give you the gift of the gab. And I think it's pretty obvious that I'm not lacking in that department. So I don't think it really matters if I have kissed it or not. But the answer is no, sadly. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make and try a painkiller cocktail for the first time. It is safe to say that I absolutely adored this. It is right up there on my list of some of my favorite summery tiki cocktails that I have ever tried. I cannot wait to have one on a beach in the near future at some point, but I'm absolutely loving this. So if you at home are a fan of a painkiller, and I know that some of you are based on your comments, please let me know how did I do? Is there a different way that you make this? Do you use Pusser's Rum or do you have a different one that you like to go to? Have you made the painkillers number one through three? I would really love to know about that. And yeah, how do you make yours? Let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more easy cocktails that you can make at home, I will leave a playlist up here. And if you have not already, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every single week and I would love to have you back for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Cheers!